My name's Eric. I'm a digital nomad traveling around the country in my Subaru Forester, and today I'm escaping normal life at Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park in Colorado. Good morning from SS Park. I am finally gonna leave this area today. Not that I want to, I actually kinda have to. I have some things being delivered to me uh, down south in a smaller town in the lower part of Colorado. So I have to get down there some point, sometime this week. But SS Park is a really great area if you ever come here, I do recommend it. You can see I slept on the side of the road last night. That's a pretty common thing for me, especially in this area, there's not a ton of options. Uh, I could have gone about 30 minutes north into the National Forest, but I've been having to come back to this town every couple of days to, to get some work done. Today, however, I'm going to get my first shower in the first couple of days, so I'm pretty excited, and then I'm going to hit the road. All right, well, I'm about to get my first shower in three days <laughs> at a rec center. This is actually a pretty common way to find showers on the road if you find yourself traveling for a long period of time and you're wondering how you're going to get showers. Check out rec centers. They're usually a few dollars uh, every time. Um, this one's $6 for showers, and I think like $15 if you wanna use the entire facility. But they're usually very clean, good showers, unlimited time usually. If you're interested in other ways to find showers on the road, I'll put a link right here. Uh, I made a little reel uh, about how to find showers on the road. Oh boy, did I need that fresh hot shower and some clean clothes. Yes, <laughs> it's the little thing sometimes. All right, my next stop is a little place called Nederland and it has a very, very unique history. That is seriously one of the best pizza places I have ever been to. All right, well, I'm in the town of Nederland, and aside from being a cool little mountain town, it's probably not a huge reason to come here, unless you're here for the annual Frozen Dead Guy Days. Yes, that is a real festival that happens annually here in March, and it started in the 90s. Basically, a guy from Norway, who presumably had never even been to Colorado before, died. But his grandson from here in Nederland, Colorado, decided to cryogenically freeze his grandfather and have him shipped from Norway and eventually making his way to Colorado. After just a few years of doing that, the grandson actually had an expired visa and was forced out of the country and moved, had to move back to Norway. In which case, his daughter took over the freezing of the grandfather. And when the local government found out that this was happening, they set a clause that said no more dead bodies kept inside the residential area, but Grandpa Brito, the person who was actually frozen from Norway and then shipped here, was grandfathered in to the clause and said no more after that. Ever since then, it kind of became national headlines, and now every year in March, they have a big festival here which celebrates Grandpa Brito and the weird story behind it. Ironically, it's actually been moved out of the town of Nederland. It is now starting to happen in Estes Park, which is just an hour north of here. And that's where I've been for the past few days. So that's actually where the festival happens now, but it's still just an interesting story nonetheless. He's got my dream home. Yeah, one of these days. I can especially use it now. Look, 
It's even got the furnace in it and everything. Oh, lucky. snowed last night look at that well good morning from a snowy mountaintop <laughs> uh this is a national forest and you can stay in a national forest up to 14 days i will not be staying here 14 days <laughs> but you can it's actually just outside the town of breckenridge yeah it's a beautiful spot i knew it was going to snow today in Vale, which is uh where i'm headed but I did not know it was gonna still here, so it was kind of a nice little surprise. Chilly one this morning though. Uh, it said it felt like 22 this morning, <laughs> and the wind is kicking up enough that I can't even cook breakfast or anything here. So I have to go into town, and A, I have to do some work, so I, there's a library I'm gonna do some work at, and B, uh, I'll find a parking lot or something to make breakfast at. Uh, lower elevation, hopefully it's a little warmer, not as windy. It's the wind that really always makes it uh, more challenging for me because when the wind blows really hard, then it's harder to keep a flame going on my burner. It always dances around a lot. It's just, it's just not as easy, not as fun. Plus, my hands are already pretty cold and doing dishes and cold water, something like that, just doesn't sound like a plan. So <laughs> I'm gonna head down to the town. Beautiful starts in the morning, I think. troll somewhere on this trail there he is well I guess I got a leak <laughs> Well, just washed my hair in the sink. <laughs> hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> dinner in a parking lot again. <laughs> For dinner tonight, I kind of made spaghetti. <laughs> it's ground up turkey um, with some noodles. I'm gonna put some uh, rotel in there and I put some spaghetti sauce and I have some olives left over. So <laughs> I know that kind of sounds weird to most people, but I like olives. <laughs> well, good morning from an 18 degree morning. <laughs> Actually, it's a bit of a warm trend. When I first woke up at 6 a.m., it said it felt like 14 degrees. <laughs> so yeah, so pretty brisk one this morning. It didn't snow last night. This is still snow left over from yesterday. It snowed most of the day here. Uh, but yeah, beautiful sight. Like I said, I'm still in the National Forest. This is still in, Bre I'm still in Breckenridge. So even though it was literally freezing last night, um, I actually slept really, really good. So some of the ways that I stay warm when it's really cold is first off, I have a 10 degree sleeping bag. It's by Cedar Summit and it has been amazing. It's made of down. It is just a great sleeping bag. And then it hasn't gotten to that level yet, but I also uh, have a fleece liner that I can put inside the sleeping bag. So it hasn't gotten to that level yet, hasn't gotten below 10 degrees where I needed the fleece liner, but I do have it. Last night, I slept in wool socks, some flannel pajamas, and a hoodie. Overall, I say very, very warm in the car. And then right before I got into bed, I turned on the car for about five or 10 minutes and just let the heat run in the car so it was nice and warm while I was crawling into my sleeping bag. Another thing I do is I put these reflectives on the windows and that helps not only keep the heat in with the reflectives on the inside, but the outside is black on the other side. So that way, if someone was to walk up to the car, it would just look like really, really good tinted windows. And in case anybody's wondering how I made these reflectors from my car windows, it's very simple. I went to the dollar store and picked up this foam core. That's what the black side is. I chose black because I wanted to look like tinted windows when I had it in the car. And those are again, just a dollar each. I cut them down to fit inside the window. Then I went online, I bought a big roll of reflectives. Then I glued the reflectives to the foam core and voila, tinted on one side, heat on the other. Well, I am headed down into the town of Breckenridge. I wanna make some coffee. 
and then I'm going to hit the road. My next stop, Vail. Good morning from the Colorado National Monument. This is in Grand Junction, Colorado. And I didn't even know this place existed until a few days ago when I started looking up places on a map of things to do in the area before getting here. And this came up and so yeah, decided to check it out. This falls under the national park system. So you're definitely gonna want a national park pass because this is for $80, this lasts for an entire year. And I think national monuments are usually $25 to get in while national parks are usually $35. So if you do literally just like three of these in a year, it definitely pays to have this. Uh, I kind of came to Grand Junction kind of out of necessity. I am headed to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, which is about an hour and a half southeast of here. <laughs> and I know that I said that I was headed to Vail, and I did go to Vail, but there was just nothing to do in Vail, to be really honest with you. <laughs> I got there and I started looking up things to do, and honestly, it was just a lot of just really high-end shopping, and um, there was some parks and some trails and stuff to check out, but it was really cold when I was there. It was probably about 35 or so, and it was actually a little bit of sleet and snow. So it just really wasn't the best day to like walk around and do a trail. <laughs> and I knew that Vail and Breckenridge and places like that would be mostly ski places. Um, but at least Breckenridge had like a main street area you could walk around and just kind of go in some shops or restaurants or I grabbed coffee there one morning and stuff. Uh, Vail just didn't really have any of that, at least not what I saw. So I was there really just to grab some lunch and then I headed out. So it was kind of funny this morning, I kind of had this moment of realization of just how far I am from home, from Florida. And that's because I started looking at a map and I realized I'm only about an hour and 45 minutes away from Moab. And Moab, to me, just feels like this completely far out west uh, place that everyone goes to for national parks and red rocks like this and stuff. Just beautiful, beautiful area. And I guess Colorado feels like the West coming from Florida, but I guess in my mind, I just picture like more just mountainous and stuff like that. So I don't know. I guess it's just one of those moments where you realize, man, I am, I am far from Florida. I am far from home. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to check out this area and yeah, hopefully show you some sights from here. Well, pretty awesome. I just came across two subscribers. I was out here just looking at the landscape and another Subaru Forester actually pulled up and they got out and they're like, hey man, we've seen your channel before. <laughs> so that was very, very cool. Two amazing women from Jacksonville nonetheless. And I lived in Jacksonville for 12 years and have all my stuff back in storage there. And my brother lives there, so I'm very familiar with the area. So amazing to meet you guys. You know, I don't say it enough, but it is it just really, really means a lot when I come across a subscriber somewhere out in the wild and they say that they've seen my stuff because, you know, I'm out here trying. <laughs> I'm trying to make something that is informative, helpful, but also encourages others to get outside and explore more of the country. You know, one of my main goals with this channel is to really just hopefully inspire other people to get out and see more of the country and explore places like this that I've never heard of personally. And talking to the, to, to the ladies earlier, they've never heard about this place either. So the US has so much of these places. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And I've really learned that every state has its own natural beauty. Just look things up. There's always places to go to. You don't have to be a nomad like me to travel across the country. There's tons and tons of places, probably in your own backyard or close to you enough that you can make a day's trip out of it or a weekend trip out of it and see some amazing places.
people good morning from some open BLM land. Now, if you're not familiar, BLM stands for Bureau of Land Management, and it is public land. You can sleep on this for up to 14 days. National Forest and BLM are very, very similar. You can basically do whatever you want out here. Some people come out here in these kind of places and shoot. Luckily, no one's doing that here. You can camp. You can kind of do whatever you want. It's public land, like I mentioned. Usually BLM is something like this, kind of a desert almost looking environment. And what I really like about it is that you really do have your own open space. There are two other campers right over here over my shoulder, but they're about 50 to 75, maybe 100 yards away. Uh, but we all have our own space. BLM is really one of the main reasons that most full-time travelers stay out west. I mean, there's probably a, a lot of reasons and there's an abundance of things to do. There's also an abundance of places to stay. I'm just outside the town of Grand Junction. I'm ahead in town. There's a Planet Fitness so I can get a shower and start my day. All right, cooking dinner on the side of the street <laughs> next to this park, but I made some pad thai. So I got some uh, cut up chicken in there, of course some pad thai noodles. Um, there was a sauce. I put some fresh vegetables in there like uh, peppers and mushrooms and topped it off with a little bit of peanuts. All right, well, two little updates. One, I got a haircut. <laughs> My hair was starting to get so long and starting to look like Doc Brown. And two, I'm still in Grand Junction. I went to the library today and I actually emailed a company about a potential job. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it sounds like it's right up my alley. It's another creative job, be able to do a lot of what I'm doing now uh, on the freelance side, but actually for a company. So a little bit more recurring work and recurring paychecks, hopefully. Probably gonna leave here tomorrow and uh, head to Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Well, I'm at Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. This is in Lower Colorado, and I have never been here before. This is a new national park for me. Um, I did very, very little research about coming here other than I knew it would be cloudy and cold, <laughs> which it obviously is. There's snow everywhere, which is making for some incredible views. It really is. And it's cold. It says it, says it feels like 29. It is cold, but there's no wind. So since there's no wind, it really is not that bad. But it is really, really gorgeous here. And there's not a lot of people, which is really nice. National parks usually can get pretty busy. It obviously depends on the weather and the popularity of the park <laughs> in the time of year. But yeah, it's gorgeous here. I'm absolutely loving it here. Kind of like the Grand Canyon. This is gorgeous here. It is really, really amazing. If you ever are in Southern Colorado, check out Black Canyon of the Gunnison. It is really amazing here. There's my other dream home. That's the Scout. I saw this Kimbo the other day, and there's the Scout. Yeah, again, one of these days. All right, well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end my video here. I continue to just fall in love with this state. There really is just an abundance of amazing things like this everywhere in Colorado. I really wanna spend more time here. I do have to head about three or four hours to the east of here to a small town called Alamosa. I do have some mail waiting for me I have to pick up. But the good thing is right next to Alamosa is Sand Dunes National Park, and I've never been there. So I'll get to cross off uh, another national park off my list. <laughs> From there, I honestly have no idea what I'm gonna do. I could either A, go south into New Mexico, 
and try to escape a little bit more of the cold. <laughs> uh, or B, I could turn around from Alamosa and head back west into more parts of Colorado because I really did want to check out San Juan Mountains. There's the town of Telluride, which I've heard so much about for so many years now. And for a few times now, people have recommended to me to go to the town of Burre. So that looks like another amazing place. However, it's Colorado, it's the mountains, and the low next week will be in the teens. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of just watch the weather, see what happens, and then just kind of make like a last minute judgment call on what I want to do. Until next time, thank you for escaping normal life with me.